Namaste. So today's verse is about the desire for liberation. This is actually the main point or the main qualification or as Nomi put it, the main requirement for self-realization. Without the desire for liberation, why do we go through all this stuff? Why do we study the scriptures? Why do we do sadhana? Why do we cultivate all these qualifications? And the answer is we want to attain liberation. Liberation from what? Well, in the beginning, it's usually liberation from suffering. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through birth and death in the material world. And we don't want to have the embarrassment of being a human being on planet Earth. Then later on, we see liberation as merging with God or merging with Brahman or becoming one with Brahman or even becoming Brahman. But actually, of course, we are always Brahman. We were never born. We never die. We are Brahman. Everything is Brahman. And there is no duality, really. So then, if we want to become liberated from Maya, from the illusion, from that which is not, then we have to understand what is Maya. Why is there Maya? Very important question. Richard reminded uh, me of it yesterday when he made the comment that the why is the most important question you can ask. Why is there Maya? Why do we require to be liberated from it? Well, why does Brahman create Maya? Brahman is everything. Brahman is the origin of everything. Why is there Maya in the first place? Why is there ignorance? Why is there suffering? Why is there illusion? So let's go back to the good old Ishopanishad. Aum. Purnamidang Purnamada Purnam Purnam Udachate That the Absolute Brahman Aum is complete. Complete means everything. So the Absolute would not be complete without the opposite of the Absolute. See, Brahman is Sat Chit Ananda. And Maya is Asat Nishchit and Nirananda. So there have to be both. Or Brahman would not be complete. That's the reason that escapes almost everybody. What to speak of the, the Christian theologians, even the Vedic theologians, can't answer this question. Why is Maya? And they say it's beginningless and inexplicable. Well, beginningless it is, but inexplicable it's not. Maya is simply the shadow of Brahman, the opposite of Brahman, the yin to Brahman's yang. So, Maya has to exist so that Brahman is complete, Purnam. This is the real meaning of complete. And this is why we even worship Maya in the form of the goddess, the universal mother, because it is she who has the unenviable task of creating the illusion. 
See, really, there is no duality. Really, there is no temporary creation. Everything is Brahman. Sarva Kalvidam Brahma. That's one of the four Vedic uh, Mahavakyas, the great sayings of the Vedas. Everything is Brahman. That means everything is ultimately non-dual. Duality itself is illusion. It doesn't really exist. So when we say, Aham Brahmasmi, I am that Brahman, I am. That means that we are embracing both Brahman and the illusion that I am a separate individual, that I am an ego, that I am a person, a personality, as we used to say back in New Jersey, a poisonality. <laughs> some people are little poisonalities and some people are big poisonalities. And we accept that this Maya is necessary. See, like Ramana Maharshi, when people would ask him, what can we do about the suffering in the world? He basically said, you can't do anything about it. The world has to be the way it is. The world is perfect, just the way it is. With all the suffering, with all the ignorance, with all the illusion, with all the nonsense that goes on, because it is the antithesis of Brahman, it is the shadow of Brahman, it is the negative view of Brahman. So we want to attain liberation, not exactly from Maya altogether, but from the illusion that Maya is real from the illusion that Maya is separate from Brahman. And we find this in the concept of Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. Brahman without qualities and Brahman with qualities. So this Saguna Brahman is actually part of Brahman or is Brahman, but it appears to have qualities. It appears to have changes in actions. Now, how did I get to this realization? Very easily. Last night I was meditating it was about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And I was meditating on the fifth jhana, which is unlimited space. And I realized, I'm not just thought, and not just imagined, but actually realized directly that Brahman is the substrate of space. Brahman, unlimited consciousness, which is the sixth jhana, is the substrate of space. And this is a door directly into Brahman in case any of you are interested in your practicing. So when you think or when you visualize or meditate on the eternal openness and nothingness of space, what's behind it? The substrate of Brahman. And space is like the negative part of Brahman. Brahman's shadow, Brahman's illusion that makes Brahman complete. Because to have space, you have to have dimension, measurement, change, time. Huh? Scientists know that you can't just have space without time. They call it space-time. So the space-time continuum is formed of both space and time. And to constate time, we need change. And to have change, we have to have dimension, measurement, change, 
creation, maintenance, destruction, the three modes of material nature, the whole package. So just to have space then implies the whole material creation. This is part of Brahman. This is necessary for Brahman to be complete. So then it follows that liberation, mukti, means not that we completely disappear huh, from the material world, but that we see it as it is, that it is simply an illusion, simply maya, simply a f an appearance in Brahman and its temporariness and all of its different qualities are simply the qualities that are opposite Brahman. If Brahman is sat or eternal, the creation is asat or temporary. If Brahman is chit or consciousness, then matter is unconscious. And if Brahman is ananda or full of joy, then the material creation has to be nirananda or full of suffering, dukkha. So there's birth and death, there's different designations that turn out to be temporary. Huh? And the whole secret of the material world, which is something I'll get into deeply in another video, is that it appears to be a garden of delights. But when we get into it and when we become committed to it, we find out differently. It's actually a dungeon. <laughs> so liberation then means seeing oneself as Brahman and seeing the world as Brahman, but not Nirguna Brahman, Saguna Brahman an appearance, an illusion, a mirage within Brahman that is Brahman. Because if Brahman is the cause of the illusion, then the illusion has to have all the qualities of Brahman because the cause, the qualities of the cause inhere in the effect. This is discussed in later shlokas in Aparokshanubhutihi. So, this is the reason we seek liberation. This is why we have to have a strong desire for liberation. A desire so strong that it overrides our attachment to everything else. That it completely negates our involvement with the material modes of nature. And that leads us to attain complete self-realization. Aung Tatsa Aung Shakti Aung